It's all here. A no-hitter. Grand slam. Have all the fun you want. Every moment. Every game. Make sure you guys tune in. Catch the White Sox only on NBC Sports Chicago. Welcome to the Under Center Podcast presented by St. Xavier University with our Bears contributor, Eric Strobel, Tony Gill running the show, and I am Kenneth Davis. On this episode of Under Center, we'll go over this week's OTAs and what stood out during today's press conference featuring Matt Nagy, Sam Mestifer, Cole Commit, Damian Williams, and last but not least, Darnell Mooney. All right, guys, how y'all doing? Let's start off with you, E. How are you? How have you been doing? Hello, Ken, Tony. Good to be back with you guys. Uh, I'm doing fine. Be- another beautiful day here in Chicago land. Uh, we could use a little bit of rain. That's the the dad in me saying my lawn could use a little bit of green. I was going to say you're here. talking about your grass. You're but... talking about your grass. <laughs> you said that, I was like, that man's grass is turning a little yellow. It's right turning now. a little brown, a little brown, little yellow streaks here. So, but but let's be honest, the weather's been been really great. I uh, was able to get outside a little bit today and. Uh, nice to have some some hard news from the Bears beat. We're kind of in the Wednesday to Wednesday oases, right? Otherwise, it's it's just kind of we're we're waiting to hear what's going on up in Green Bay in between Wednesday. <laughs> right, basically. Real quick, and this is for the mailbag. When do you water your grass? When do I water? So my my little village has a an ordinance where okay. We can only water on, you know, odd and even days. So like, you can't water two days in a row. Like the right, the, the odd numbered addresses can water on, you know, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, whatever, even numbers, the opposite. So I, I still am searching for, I don't have fancy in-ground sprinklers or anything. So I'm oh, still yeah. searching for the, 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 a good above ground hose connected sprinkler. I haven't found a great one yet. And I have kind of an oddly shaped yard where it's uh, tough to get coverage, get all, you know what yeah. I'm saying? So yeah. it's it's not going great right now. Um with, Drew, with what the, time of day? The drought what time, conditions. <laughs> what time of day? What time of day do you do you water? What grass? time of day? I would usually do it I it's either early or, or late. I mean, you don't want to yeah. do it in the in the in, middle of the day when the sun's yeah, going to burn it off, but to, yeah. I I would probably say I normally do it if I do it later in the day so it can sit there and get into the ground there and not get burned off if I do it in the morning all throughout right. the day. Eric, I feel that they are impending on your freedoms as an American. <laughs> how I feel. Wait, you mean my village? Water your grass whenever you feel like it. As a, as a, it, it, it's a, a, it's a water, it's a water availability issue. They don't want everyone watering all the time because then you might run into some supply issues. Uh, Wait, do you guys get your water from an aquifer from Lake Michigan? I honestly, I believe it's the lake. I honestly okay, couldn't tell okay, you though. Make, okay, but this is this is the thing. So last year I went full on because they tell you in the morning is the best. But if you have to, to go in the evening. Right. Yeah. I went full on mornings and I didn't get the results that I, I wanted. Mm. I didn't pull my hose out. I had my hose out for about two weeks, but I used it Whoa. yesterday. So relax yourself, son. The <laughs> garden hose. But the, the thing, the thing is this. So my next door neighbor, she she's watering a little bit too frequently because actually you mm. don't want to water your grass back right. to back, Tony. You want you want the roots to dig in deeper. And if you water it back to back, they're going to get shallow and you basically are going to ruin your grass. But the thing is, and I don't kind of have a problem with it. Her whole her, her sprinkler is overlapping onto my, my lawn. Right. Mm. But she's doing it frequently. And she All had the time. That, and she had it weakening on like your around, grass. Yes. And she had it on around like two at like one or two today. And I'm like, like, now slow down. You're going to ruin what I'm doing over here. Right. So that was that was part of the reason why we had to do under center gardening talk right here. <laughs> and then the other thing is I just had some some sod laid down. So I have the hand Ooh. implement on the on the hose to just water those those sp- spot where they put the hay and the netting down. Right. To to let that grass grow. So I have that going on as well so there's it's a multifaceted uh situation over here in the strobel front and backyard <laughs> and, and speaking of multi-faceted situations we got to dive into this press conference oh today. my god that and, i need to i need to clap for that transition holy off, smokes starting off with uh, head coach matt Nagy, uh one of the things that stood out to me of course if anybody didn't hear jimmy graham and marquise goodman weren't there today and i don't know about you eric but another Folds no-show. Nick Folds not there again mm-hmm. 
and I don't know if he's getting allowances because like yeah, you're not gonna play. You can just do whatever the hell you want to right now. Well, well, and and Nagy said last week that it was a personal thing. He had Family. some personal yeah. issues he was taking care of. Whatever that is, hopefully everything's hope it's not, hope it's on not the zero. up and up, and it's just yeah. taking care of some business and there's no issues. Let's put that out there right now. Uh, but he did say last Wednesday that he expected him or he was expecting him back. Not that he had to be here, but this is all voluntary. Still, next week is mandatory that he was expecting him generally to be or back around the team and that up at Hallis this week. Uh, he might be he might not just not be participating in the on field portion of the practice. I think if it, it, it's a much bigger thing, if next week he, all of a sudden he's still not there at the mandatory veteran minicamp, then mm. the questions will really be coming from the beat uh, on these zooms. Cause then his absence becomes even more conspicuous than it already is. And again, I'm sure there's a legitimate reason for it. He's ne never been anything but an upstanding teammate and citizen in the locker room by all accounts. So I'm, I'm, I'm sure this is, this is nothing, but that's kind of what we're doing these days with these OTAs, especially because most of the defense still is not there. Just kind of taking taking a informal head count, right, Ken? Yeah, I mean we have to. I mean, yeah. there's not much else for. to do. Let's be honest. Not what we're here for. One thing though, that I'm getting. I guess this show will be things that I'm slightly getting tired of. Will be with this show. Uh, the, the title of this show. If Matt Nagy talks about the Patrick Mahomes template, which I know he will until the end of the season, one more time. Uh, Dan Reader asked him a question. And, I was about to uh, say, to be fair, he was asked directly about it. I know, I know. But he, listen, I think he went and told Dan, he was like, make sure you ask me the Mahomes question. <laughs> he texted him right before. <laughs> be like, make sure you raise your hand. We'll call on you first. <laughs> and you just lay it on us. Exactly. Thanks, Dan. And he, he talked about that Alex Smith was getting a lot of reps and that Patrick Mahomes was getting a lot of mental reps. And then that last game at the end of the year when Patrick Mahomes did start just during the season at practice, some of the things. And I think anybody that watches ESPN, you kind of if you follow Lewis Riddick, everything he was saying about Patrick Mahomes that rookie year basically came to fruition because mm -hmm. he kept telling us, like, this is Ferraris up there. And, you know, when they unleash it and I mean. I thought I, I thought he was going to be good, but I didn't think he was going to be goatish to to say the least. <laughs> uh, but one but but one of the things that uh, listening to it and listening to the reps, and even though he's the the backup, knowing that he's not going to get enough reps, and we talked about this in the last show, kind of when we would prefer for him to start, if it would be from the beginning of the season or if it would be sometime, you know, after some, a certain amount of games, so on and so forth. Um, it, 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 I, it makes me think even more that I hope it's not at the beginning of the season. Now, of course he could win the job doing training camp, but if he's not even getting those reps and OTAs and we could tell during training camp, he won't get those reps. I know we talked about that during the, uh, preseason that he's probably going to get a lot of reps being the backup quarterback. Uh, but then he's playing against other twos and he's not necessarily playing against the, the best players on the opposing team's defense. Uh, so I, I, I think I, it's, you know, it's a catch 22. They want to win their, they want to save their jobs. They want to start off bad. You want to get Andy assimilated to the entire team and they get everybody on the same page. But as Bears fans, uh, wanting Justin Fields to succeed earlier rather than later, uh, you kind of want him to get more reps now so that when he does step in during the season, there won't be as much turbulence as far as up and down play. This is something Nagy's talked about a lot in his recent availabilities with the media is just the difference in where fields and Dalton are purely from an experience standpoint, throw out the, the physical ability, right? Andy Dalton's a 10 year starter. He's seen everything you can see as an NFL quarterback and fields is learning how to take an under center snap. Mm -hmm. Apparently there were a few botched exchanges today. Um, ball was on the ground a couple times, which isn't uh, it's obvious. It's June 9th. It's not a problem. It's just something they're working on. That's something he needs to get familiar with. Uh, Nagy's mentioned a couple times about the example of bringing a guy in motion and understanding the speed you want him to come in motion. When do you want him to break off that motion or continue? It's just the little things that based on whatever coverage you're seeing or whatever the motion is, is exposing in that coverage or unveiling what you need to do with that motion. Whereas Dalton just knows it and does it fields is still thinking about it, of course, because again, this is all new to him. All of this is new to him. So while, we might, and I'm sure we'll talk about some of the, the, the fun quotes we got today about Fields' incredible deep ball. He's obviously well known for being able to throw deep and having a, a, a very pretty uh, throw down the field. They're, they're still figuring out, he's still figuring out the mental side of this, the mental aspect of the game. 
And it's, it's clearly going to weigh heavily on the coaching staff's mind as they progress through this. It's not a competition, but as they progress through this developmental plan for fields over the next couple of months. And I thought it was interesting. You mentioned reps and mental reps. He was Nagy was talking about fields being on the sideline, watching Andy Dalton or behind Dalton, watching Dalton take the reps with John D Filippo, the quarterback's coach and working with him while the play is going on, repeating the cadence, repeating the play call, talking through it as the play is happening. So doing everything, but being under center or in the gut. Right. And I thought that was interesting. I, I feel like a lot of times you wouldn't see the quarterback's coach not working with the quarterback who's actually in the play, mm-hmm. but working with the guy who's in the back watching. I, I, that, that was an interesting little nugget that jumped out to me. But that, that experience gap is going to be something that Fields needs to overcome. If, if he, I'm sure he has a goal. I'm sure his goal is to play week one. Why wouldn't it be? It should be. Right. If he wants, if he's going to achieve that goal, that experience gap is what he's going to have to conquer and and get over. Otherwise they're not going to have a choice, but to start with the steady veteran hand and make fields force the issue further down the line. And Nagy po- pointed out that there were a, a, not issues, but a couple of fumble, a fumble from a uh, right. fields in a misalignment. So again, showing it, you know, I'm not saying he's not ready, but also showing a few of the warts, you know, cause you can't yeah, shoot. He's figuring everything. this stuff out. Yeah. And, exactly. and apparently Dalton, by, by judging by the tweets from the beat writers who were there, Dalton threw a few picks today. So everyone's getting used to this offense. Neither guy fields nor Dalton is familiar with this offense before this off season. So there's, they're all figuring it out but that experience plays a factor in picking it up quickly and being able to understand and diagnose what you're looking at across the line from you. So I would say Dalton has a clear leg up. That's why he's the That's nominal right. starter at this point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But and- they're, they're, they're setting the foundation, right? They're putting the building blocks in place for both of them, but specifically fields as an NFL player. And if he keeps stacking those good days and stacking those building blocks, who knows where we get to, in July, in August, in September. Yeah. Um, and then you had, I believe Jason Leisure uh, asked about Phil should learn from Dalton. And uh, he said Andy's cadence and voice inflection and how to handle teammates. And Justin will be himself. And But also he pointed out they can learn from each other. Um, so that's that was another thing that kind of stood out to me when he said that that there's stuff that Andy can learn from Justin Fields. And we kept hearing from the players today raving, some of them raving about Justin Fields, but some of them also playing it, playing it close to their vest because Andy Dalton is the starter and you don't necessarily want to just talk down on your starter about this dream scenario about about this kid. And one thing that I have pointed out was I loved how Cole commit sidestepped the question. I believe Colleen asked him uh, his field thought. He said he's been awesome. He comes in with his head down. And he's ready to go. Uh, but then they asked him, as you had talked about before the show, and being a Bears fan, for everybody that knows that a Cole commit went to Notre Dame, but he grew up in Greater Chicago, and that he's been a longtime Bears fan. How did they feel? How did you feel? Kind of getting to how we all talked about our emotions when Justin Fields was drafted. Did did Cole commit go through those same emotions? And Cole commit said, "Well, I'm no longer a fan, but I'm sure the kid was." happy and I was like the kid but I was like well Cole Kermit did get come out the year before right but I wrote in my notes I was like smooth sidestep which he should have. You, it was listen, savvy. It was savvy. Yeah, it was sa- oh, that and we'll get into the vaccination sidestep. He, he basically came out like listen don't ask me nothing. All right. He was, tap vax, dancing. he was tap dancing today. My vax business. This is my vax business. All right. From Cole Komet. But yeah, Cole Komet. And you mentioned how that he looked like he was toned up a little bit more, which I agree with you. But I was more impressed with mentally how savvy Cole Komet was during this press. It kind of made me feel like I, I can't wait for this kid to explode on the scene because if he's this, if he's this savvy, oh man, it's going to be interesting uh, catching him in interviews if, if he does turn into the player that we hope he turns to down the line. Well, and just like you learn things and figure out how to play on the field, you learn about the other aspects of the game, the media aspect included. That he, he went to Notre Dame, he went to big time program, but I doubt he did nearly as much media being a college student, that's just not something they subject mo- anyone really other than the head coach. The head coach does most of the media in uh, college football, but then you have maybe one session a week for a handful of the top players for that broadcast, the broadcast team that's going to be working with them that weekend or whatever else. It's 
they do some, but it's not nearly as much as the NFL. So I'm sure last year that was a bit of learning experience for him. And he came out today, like a seasoned pro, a seasoned vet yeah, yeah. and was, and was given some real nice non-answer answers. And so, sweet. Hey, good for it him. Was, it was sweet. Nothing. Yes, <laughs> that's it right there. There were sweet. Nothing. So it was, it was top notch non-answer answers, which impressed me to say the least about the kids PR game. I was impressed, but look, there were some players who didn't hide their feelings when it came to Justin Fields. And one was Darnell Mooney. Yeah. Darnell Mooney yeah. said that during one route, midway through, he smiled. Oh, I love he, it. <laughs> I was like, I mean, and the funny thing is, it, I envision a speedster like Darnell Mooney in my head breaking and running like the flash and then slowing down for a second and smiling <laughs> and then continue throughout the route and receiving the ball. So that was good to hear how him and Damian Williams both talked about uh, Justin Fields and how special and yeah. what they thought he was going to be. And another thing that throughout the whole Justin Fields stream and shout out to Pat Finley, cause he's not going to let those Justin Fields questions die now. He's coming. Justin Fields loaded for the book. He wrote, I asked, 15 million Justin Fields questions to everybody. Hey, the give the people what they want, man. Exactly. Give the people what they want. Exactly. You like this song? We'll play it again. We all yeah. got a lighter. Play up. the hits, baby. <laughs> play the hits. Just play the hits. Uh, but I don't blame them. No, no, I, I don't blame them either. But the thing that's that we keep hearing, which we already know, is that the kid is not up there playing games. He has his head down and he's focused on what he needs to do. And basically he's built to be who we think he's supposed to be on and off the field. Well, I don't, let me not even say off the field. That's, that's something that we don't know as far as someone's character off the field. I'm like, I don't, I don't feel like touching that, but um, still, I, I like to still hear that about Justin Fields and that it's permeating throughout the team that he's this guy that we've been told that he is. Yeah. The, the Mooney answers about, the throwing the deep ball. It, it was great because I think an episode or two ago, we brought this up. We talked about Darnell Mooney being someone who would potentially be a, a great, uh, someone who would benefit greatly from playing with Justin Fields. Because again, we saw time and time again, last year, Mooney being wide the hell open downfield, beat his man, used his speed, got separation, but the throw was offline. The throw was short. He had to slow up and let the defender catch up, et cetera, et cetera. I feel like there were, five, six, seven plays that could have been home runs that were either turned into singles, doubles, or just strikeouts, so to speak, to continue that metaphor because of a poor throw or a, a, a missed connection, et cetera, whatever. <laughs> so to hear him talk about this being, and, and he, for those who didn't see it, he was demonstrating exactly how Justin throw, drops the ball in the bucket, so to speak, puts it at a very specific angle. So it hits the guy in stride. And I'm just, sitting back envisioning in my mind's eye, these guys, maybe not week one, maybe not week two, but at some point in the near future, hooking up for just some, some home runs. And I am very excited. Matt Nagy brought it up too, talking about when the ball is in the air, the ball is released from the quarterback and it looks like the receiver and the defender are still clumped together very close. But that when the ball's in the air, that's when the receiver creates that separation. And I think, exactly. I think we're going to see some, some interesting schemed plays for Darnell Mooney this year to try and unleash him a little bit more so than he was last year. He had a really, really good rookie season Exceptional and, rookie year. and proved and as a fifth round pick came in. Say. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no. I was going to say exceptional year for a fifth round pick. Yeah. I, I, yeah. So that, 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 I mean, it was a starter from week one, essentially. Yeah, and and being slight, we worried about, and Matt Nagy talked yeah. about it, how much he could handle the physicality, and he didn't get hurt to the last game of the season. And I'm not saying that, I mean, unfortunately right. he got hurt, but looking at a guy that you thought was like, okay, maybe he'll be a slot guy, so it's like, no, 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 no. You, you, you know what I'm saying? Now you got another guy on the outside, um, and the way that he plays, like, I'm not, I'll tell you this, I don't, it's not that I don't like these players. Mm -hmm. My preference would be that I don't want a, a T.Y. Hilton. I don't want a um, – what was the receiver that played for um, – that played for Pittsburgh between Plasico and Antonio Bryant? Santonio Holmes? No, not Santonio – after Santonio Holmes. And he – I think he went to Baltimore after he was in Pittsburgh. But he was another – I think – I don't know if his Mike last Wallace? name was Phillips. Mike Wallace. Yes, Mike Wallace. Yes, Thank you, Tony. It. Thank there you. That's that. Listen – I don't like a guy that is just speed. I get up under the ball guy. I like a guy home runs or nothing, home run or bust. Yeah, I like a guy that no, I can stop in my route, high point this ball again. That's 
when you saw Mooney doing stuff like that, catches in traffic. Like, oh, yeah. 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 They was like, Oh, this isn't just a one trick pony here. Um, uh, but sticking with Mooney, I loved how they asked him about the Jalen Ramsey, uh, situation. Yeah. <laughs> and he basically was like, dude, I'm not, I'm not worried about this. A lot of great DBs in there, but you could tell he was chomping at the bit. He had he a was big like, old to, smile, big yeah, old I'm about smile. To show on him face. Something. I'm about to show him something. And he said he was looking forward. Uh, do we have, wait, do we have to do give the, we had to let everybody know that didn't see these interviews that the vaccination status of the bears players. All right. So for, 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 uh, Mooney, he's, he's getting vaxxed. All right. He said he's yeah. He said he's looking into it in the near future. Yes. Yes. Like look, looking nice. into scheduling it for the the near future. Yeah. So and we already talked a little about Cole Komet. If you didn't hear, he said it's none of your business. <laughs> um. <laughs> right. None which, yeah. Yeah. None yet. Which is it's actually not fair. any of our business. That's totally fair. Yeah. It's totally it's totally totally fair. Uh, Sam Mustafer, he got back. I loved his, his answer. Shot. I loved his answer about it. He said, if that's what it takes to keep me on the field, I'm all about it. Like, oh, let's yeah, do, yeah. let's roll. You can't be a practice squad player. Come hit someone. So you're not getting back. <laughs> all right. It was like, you said what? Oh man. I, I, I was joking. I'm about to go get back right now. He has his first shot. He said he's getting his second shot next week. Uh, and uh, we haven't talked Damian Williams yet, but while we're going over vaccinations, he said that, you know, he needs a little bit more information. He says he has not made his decision due to his study. Do, do, he needs to do more study. Mm-hmm. Eventually he, he asked around and look around and he probably said he's, uh, he, he wants to know basically what's going into his body. He's really big on going into his body. And but, again, that's totally fair. As long totally fair. as if you need to know to the, nth degree what it is before you do it like fair enough i don't it's, it's a weird situation for all of us in the media because it's it's important to the team because it's a competitive advantage or disadvantage if you're not mm-hmm. meeting the criteria to meet in person more not have your mask on etc but it's it's none of our it really is none of our business so any of these oh. guys deeming it appropriate to let us know one way or the other are doing us a favor they they can be all like cole Komet and say I'm going to keep it to myself. And that's totally fine. It's just a weird minefield to walk through. Um, Matt Nagy did say that he expects his entire coaching staff to be vaccinated by the time camp rolls around, which again would allow them to have much more in-person contact with their players, which they all talked about today as being a huge difference this year than last year. Whereas last year, obviously in the throes of the COVID-19 pandemic, everything was over zoom at this time of year in June, in May for the rookie mini camp, which obviously restricts, you can only do so much over zoom. It restricts your ability to really teach and get, get to know these guys. And to a person, everyone who was asked about it today talked glowingly about how awesome it is to be building chemistry, learning thing. You learn better when you're do, actually running the play than just talking about the play, all that kind of stuff. So it seems like that's being or that, especially for guys like Komet and Mooney, it's interesting. This is their first time doing this because they were rookies last year. So they come in, the first time they're really playing with their guys other than informal workouts is when they report to Hallis Hall in late July for training camp when the clock is running <laughs> essentially. Right. So th- th- it's a, uh, it's probably good for, for them and their development that they're able to get out here and knock the rust off and really get some strong reps in without worrying about, Oh, we have a preseason game in three days or whatever to get ready for. Great point. Uh, and then a free agent, free agent acquisition, Damian Williams, who to me had my favorite answer of the day. Uh, when, when I believe yeah. he was, it was some question from Dan reader asking why he opted out. And he said it was because his mom's, uh, but he said once the season started that he didn't think the season was going to come to completion and that basically he was rooting it that they, because he wasn't out there that the season wouldn't come to it, that they would stop the halt the season due to the pandemic. And I just read, wrote, he kept it a bug. Listen, that type of hate I love when it's like, I'm not that was doing a it. Real, that was a real <laughs> answer. There was no PR <laughs> spin there. That was just. Here's what I was thinking. And I, you know what? I appreciate that. I liked it. I liked it. And he also went in about how fun the running backs room is. Um, but one thing that stood out and we found out the reason that he, he decided to select the Chicago bears was his familiarity with the offense saying that after sitting out a season, he didn't want to go anywhere and learn a new offense. So I can it made appreciate sense. that. Me too. It made sense for him to come here. And even though Matt Nagy wasn't uh, coaching with the Chiefs when he was there, that Matt Nagy told him that he was basically going to use his versatility to the same way that Andy Reid and the Chiefs. And um, um, uh, what's his name? I forget the uh, the offensive coordinator. How dare I disrespect that brother? Eric B. Enemy. 
thank you, being me. I was trying to say being me, Eric being me, how they use them with Kansas. Us City. Eric's got to stick together, you know? You're right. You're totally right, E. You're totally right. Which, again, I, I know on this podcast, we really like the fact that they brought in Damian Williams because, one, I, I didn't like that that running back room. And I like Cordell Patterson a lot, but I didn't mm-hmm. like that running back room Agreed. needing him to be a running back. That yeah. was an issue with with me. I thought they should have had. I thought Cordero Patterson should be used at times, but not featured. And that you needed someone similar to w- what you think you have in a, a David Montgomery. You need another guy like that because those guys always end up going down due to injury. Right. So uh, that 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 I like that pickup, and it was good to finally uh, get them see the media talk to him and how cavalier he was with how he felt about the season not, and with him not participating. And I like that type of selfishness. Oh, agreed. And he was asked, he was very candid when asked, did he fear at times that sitting out there or making that decision to opt out was going to cost him, was going to affect his career negatively? Because remember, the last time he was on an NFL field, he was a when key factor Bowl. in the yeah. chief Super Bowl win over the 49ers. He scored a rushing and a receiving touchdown. I believe he's the first guy to have one of each in the same Super Bowl uh, going off the top of my head. Be. Ricky, Ricky Waters had to do that for the 49. Well, I think it was, I think it was one receiving one rushing and then also over 120 something total yards. It was like a combination of three things or something like that. Okay. Regardless had, had a great claim on potentially being MVP, even though the quarterback always wins the MVP. Right. Most of the time. The quarterback had an off game until the fourth quarter. He did until that, you know, late second half surge. Uh, Mm. Anyway, that's the last time he's played in an NFL game, which is hard to wrap your head around a little bit. And yeah, he, he was very honest saying, of course, that crosses your mind when you're sitting at home watching the league move on without you, essentially, you're, pu- you're putting in some work, you're lo- but you're losing reps. You're not on the practice field. You're not taking that handoff and hitting the hole and learn it, working with your teammates and stuff. You have to grind at home when nobody's watching. So deciding to come back was really easy. I wasn't ready to sit down at home, I believe is what he said. So basically he's, he seems to be chomping at the bit. And like you said, Ken, I love the depth they have now in the running back room. Montgomery, as we talked about last Wednesday after hearing from him, is is really appears primed to take the next step and become a one of the best running backs in the league, as he was down the stretch last year. Getting Tariq Cohen back is a huge lift because he's a Swiss Army knife that you can deploy in a lot of different ways. Damian Williams, obviously, we know he, he's a dual threat. Khalil Herbert, their draft pick, like they, they now have a, a really solid four, you know, one to four section on the depth chart. That's not even counting guys uh, like Artivis Pierce or Ryan Nall, who filled in capably for, you know, a few snaps here and there. Does Ryan Nall make the team? Uh, special teams? Maybe? maybe as a special teamer, but it's going to okay. be, he might be a practice squad guy. And it, it, it sounded like they're going to keep the practice squads expanded this year, since we're still not completely out of COVID. So I would imagine he sticks around. He knows the offense. He's been here for a few years. So let, let, we're pulling for Ryan Nall. This is a pro Ryan Nall podcast just for him and his, uh, his career here. Not necessarily that we want him starting no offense, Ryan, but he's, he's, he's a, he's a nice cog, I suppose on special teams. Uh, but yes, love the depth they've brought in. Herbert is probably going to factor into the return game. Uh, Tariq and we all know what he can do when he's healthy, and hopefully he's all the way back from that ACL he suffered uh, in Atlanta last year. So, will, and I think Williams is going to be a, uh, be a big part of that. He said Nagy told him, we're just going to use you just like you were used in KC. So I think the idea is, I think I mentioned this a pot or two ago, you can really get creative in how you're lining up and have – potentially two running backs in the backfield, but they're both running pass route exactly. or uh, uh, yeah, pass routes, excuse me. Mm-hmm. Um, or there's a play action or that's you're actually running or there's a double reverse or, you know, th- you can get really, really creative with the guys you have now in the fold at running back. Is there anything else from today to six out from you to you? Eric? Uh, scrolling through my notes here. I think we really hit uh, a lot of this. Uh, it was, a, it was a pretty, Meh, day. I thought. Oh, by the way, you you, you you kind of you kind of skidded by it. The the Darnell Mooney talking about Jalen Ramsey thing I found hilarious. That was my favorite moment of the day. Okay, talk about sidestepping a question. That was Obsessive. that was a samba around that question. <laughs> and shout out to our good good friend and former host of this podcast, Cam Ellis, shout who's now Cam. writing for for CBS here it's in it. Chicago, and he was the one who asked that question. Uh, and I. I I love that it was Cam. That's so Cam that he would bring that up and and remember that from a, a little while ago, a month or two ago, whatever that was. But 
Mooney's smile said everything. He he, he he was saying a lot of words, but they weren't meaning anything because that <laughs> smile said everything you need to know. And it was very cagey. There's, we're gonna, I don't want to talk. I'm not going to mention his name. We're going to play a lot of good defensive players this year. I'm looking forward to playing. I was like, good for you, man. Yes. He's going to see that. He's going to know what you're what you're thinking without you actually giving him bulletin board material. So that's a really yes. nice, fun subplot to be looking forward to uh, in just about three months here. Three months and as we're recording this, three days. I can't wait till he hits him with that double move. Oh, All right, I, I can't. Let's go. I can't wait. Today, we're going to start a new segment where we read uh, one of your reviews. So make sure you rate, subscribe, review, and give us that five star. And uh, if it's good, even if it's something ne- good or negative about us, we'll still review it as long as it's funny. But don't get too wild, man, because in these, we in these streets too, all right? Don't get your ass slapped. But now go ahead, Tony. What's the, what's the review? All right. Our uh, first review of our... Uh ratings and reviews uh, of the day comes from a man named John Witt. He gave us three stars and says, please stick to discussions on the Bears. That's why we listen. We don't need nine minutes of a podcast devoted to discussing tipping etiquette and Manny Petties. You, John, John. I you thought you wanna... said John Wick at first time, and I was like, I'm not saying too. a word. I'm not saying oh. a word to John Wick cross. Like, you... <laughs> I'm good, but sorry, continue. Yeah, I want that imaginary Keanu Reeves smoke. Um, <laughs> listen, I'll say this. I understand how you feel. But, one, it's important that we educate people on tipping, especially during a pandemic. Uh, that's that's really important that people get hit with a tip. And that they, if there's any other people, young or old, similar to Tony, they need to be scorned. So that was nine minutes of someone getting scorned. So hopefully they won't do the same thing because I'll be upset. I, 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 Tony, I don't know if you looked at it. I told Tony to look at this, uh, this clip that I posted on my Instagram story where this gentleman was crying about the fact that he only made like a dollar or $2 off of the delivery. And then he only made like a dollar 18 off of the tip. And the go to when Tony was like, yeah, I just closed out the app. And you think about like that man could have been driving for 30 minutes for, for all, you know, including waiting for the food to be prepared, his gas, his time is it's really important that people get tips. Now I still understand you saying that. And I, I, I take it into consideration, but yeah, it was still important to do. And it was funny. Some of this stuff, some of this stuff has to be, have levity to it. You know what I'm saying? That's so I understand, but you know, it is what it is. And we do, to be fair, we do put timestamps so you can see when the Bears discussion began. So if you were like, hey, this isn't for me, that's totally fair. Skip ahead to, to the 930 mark or whatever it was, and we'll be talking about Fields or Nagy or whoever else. And and that discussion was technically part of the pre-show that became the show. That just came up organically when we found out that Tony didn't <clears throat> tip. <laughs> and we, we felt the need to intervene, to step in. And it, it was a fun little organic conversation. I don't think you're going to see that too often mid-season if, if there's a lot of stuff going on with the Bears. It, it's June. We're, we're, we're just, we're here. We're, we're along with the rest of Bears fans just waiting for real football. And we, we got on a nice little tangent. Sometimes those are the most enjoyable things for us to go through. So that that's how that happened. You guys can't play yourselves. About that, wait, wait, hey, Mr. Wait, Mr. Wait. Man, wait, this is a podcast, man. Have you not yeah, heard? We're talking before? like it happens. Same words, man. He's not going to like the grass discussion at the beginning of this episode. Huh? <laughs> he probably, let's let's be real. He probably didn't make it to this point at the podcast. If he did. <laughs> and if you got no, through no. the if you got through the grass, then God bless you, man. That that that's what's going on. But John, quick, thank you for listening. I'm a claim bullshit, right? I'm a claim bullshit. Shout out to John Witt. Because you you understand tipping and its importance. I'm going to tell you why. Because you're a person that doesn't, you're not an over-aggressive rater. Like, I can't stand people that I don't like a segment of something, so I'm going to give it one star. Mm. You, you, sir, were generous enough to give yes. us three stars, and we spent nine minutes doing something you didn't care for. So, you understand. There's, there's some gentlemanship to you, sir. I'll give you that. Because you could have just hit us with the with the zero or the one star, so I'll give you that. So you understand, you know better. You damn sure know better. So uh, that's the that's the segment. Thanks, thanks a lot, for guys, for uh, for always rating and reviewing. And uh, we're gonna do this once at the end of every episode. So if your comment is funny enough or is good enough, we'll definitely uh, read it. So thank you. 
All right. If you're going to bet, make sure you use points bet. And that is it for the Under Center Podcast. We'll be back Monday unless something else pops off. See you later.